Welcome back, beautiful souls. Hello, hello. Um, and so the topic for today's lesson, I've definitely been sitting with for well over a week now. I found that it seems to come to mind each day, um, and there are more ways that are given me um, as to how it is that uh, this can be shared um, in the most meaningful and practical way. Um, so I definitely must say that I'm giving this to Jesus because this is his course that we are learning and he is our teacher and I'm simply just doing as directed. Um, so this originated from a comment in one of my videos. Um, so thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to read um, what she wrote here. Um, because she quoted from the psychotherapy pamphlet. And if you're not sure what the psycho psychotherapy pamphlet is, it is an extension of the Course in Miracles. Um, currently, right now, it is copyrighted under the Foundation for Inner Peace. Um, yet, I feel that this is a documentation, just like the whole of the Course itself, that um, is a gift given by Jesus the Christ, um, our God. and because of that, it should be free and made available to everyone. Um, so to be honest, I have um, it linked on my website, miraclesofmind.org, for any of us to reference. Um, and it is with permission from Jesus to do so. Um, and um, so it's there um, for you to check out and, and run through your heart. I found for me that the psychotherapy pamphlet is um, extremely potent. Um, it does focus predominantly on the relationship between the therapist and the client or, or the pupil. Um, and yet he speaks of this um, you know, therapist-pupil dynamic as being any relationship. Um, that can slot into it. Um, it's just more clinical terminology um, and definitely meant to be used by, for those who classify themselves as a healer, as a teacher, as a, a therapist of any kind in the world because Jesus does um, you know, reinterpret for us what psychotherapy means. And from my understanding, psycho means the mind, the mental, um, you know, uh, 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 state of mind that we are in and how we see the world and then therapy is like a treatment right so it's a treatment for your mind and he teaches us that all therapy is psychotherapy and all illness is mental illness so if we are wanting to heal anything that has to do with the body anything that has to do with our life our relationships that aren't driving that aren't working then it always comes back to our mental state of mind and applying treatment and therapy to that mind and um, the A Course in Miracles and its wholeness, you know, the workbook, the text, the uh, manual is to help facilitate that. And then ultimately the extensions, which is the psychotherapy pamphlet, the gifts of God and the song of prayer are, are added depth to um, taking on our role as being a savior of the world or a miracle worker or, you know, God's child um, to bring our, our um, to say yes to our part in God's plan. So this is kind of like where where it's coming from. Um, so the specific section in the psychotherapy pamphlet um, is from the process of healing, which is ultimately um, a, a very important one because that is our main goal here is, is to heal our minds and accept our part in God's plan. Um, so he says here that in the process of healing 4.4, it says, where two have joined for healing, God is there. And he has guaranteed that he will hear and answer them in truth. So I'm going to read this one sentence again. She specifically pointed this out, but I'll get a little bit more in depth. Where two have joined for healing, God is there. And he has guaranteed that he will hear and answer them in truth. So what does this mean? Well, in, Jesus is very clear here that when two come together for healing, God is there. It's the same thing as in the Bible when he says, two or more shall gather in my name, there I am. So if we join for healing, we've ultimately joined in the presence where God is because healing is a holy thing. Actually, it even says that at the beginning of this paragraph, but I'll talk about that later, that healing is holy. Um, and so because of that, um, what this means is that it opens up to where the true healing is. And the true healing is founded in the voice for God that speaks on behalf of God himself because the voice for God or the Holy Spirit is the communication link between um, the, the Son um, and our Father, so the created and the creator. 
it's this link. And so through the process of psychotherapy, we are learning to step aside out of the role of being the healer or the practitioner and allow that healing practitioner to be the voice of God, the Holy Spirit in both of our minds. So he says that we're two have joined for healing, God is there. And recognize that it's saying we're two have joined for healing. This means you're coming with a shared purpose. Your shared purpose is to heal together. So it's not that someone is coming to someone else and they're going to be helped by this someone else. In fact, they're coming and joining in the idea of healing so that they both can be healed together. Jesus references this many times over and over and over and over again throughout the A Course in Miracles that we have the same need as our brothers. We, we, if we are helping our brothers, we are helping ourselves. When we give to our brothers, we are giving to ourselves. It is this law of, of giving and receiving, of, of, of you know, giving what you want to receive because as you give it to your brother, you are literally receiving it because you are one in truth. So he's saying that if another brother comes to you and asks for help, you can help them by seeing them as the same as you. You can help them by realizing that, hey, they must be coming to me for help because there's something in me that needs this help along with them. So where two have joined for healing, God is there. So you can, can be certain that God is there, that God's presence is there, that God's truth is there, that God's love is there, that God's answer is there, that God's voice is there. And that is where you put your faith. That is where you put your trust. And that is where you put your inner mind to listen to that voice to direct you very specifically. Because you might be given this task, such as, you know, I've been given this task to be a therapist in this world, but it is only, I've only really been like a wholly successful therapist when I've allowed myself to step out of the way and remember that God is here. God is teaching me as I'm teaching you and together it strengthens this trust in me and strengthens this trust and faith in you. So it goes both ways. So this is crucial. Where two have joined for healing, God is there. It takes two. It's not this whole idea that, you know, there's there's this one self and so there's only one me and so there's nothing going on and I don't need to engage with anybody outside of me because there's only one. Like that's a folly way of looking at it. The way of looking at at it is recognizing that God's Son is one in truth, absolutely. And as God's Son, we've asked to have an experience here in form. And so all of us are going to take on these seeming separate bodies, these seeming separate identities, these seeming separate levels of consciousness that we are residing on in this time-space continuum. But these seeming differences um, and these seeming different traits and different talents and different levels are what is the false. So we need to be here grounded in the recognition that I am learning, I am healing, I am awakening to what is true um, in, 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 in heaven, in reality, in eternity where it does not change, but I am still learning it within this time-space continuum. So I need to learn through and with my brothers. I need to include my brothers in my thinking. I need to include my brothers in my identity because everyone who is here is um, either reflecting the part of yourself that thinks that it's separate and different from God and each other or it's reflecting that part of yourself that knows it is one with each other and with God um, so it's always a matter of um, discerning between what is true for you and um, every single person that comes into your life helps to facilitate um, the further um, deepening of the recognition and acceptance that I am one with God and ultimately that's where our power is and that's where all of this healing is pointing to so the first sentence where two have joined for healing God is there and he has guaranteed that he will hear and he will answer them in truth. So not only is it guaranteed that he's there, but it's guaranteed that he will hear you and he will answer you. Now this comes back to the recognition that he will hear you because you are one with him. He will answer you because he loves you. <laughs> Okay? He will hear you because you are one with him and he will answer you because he loves you. And Jesus always also reminds us in the Course in Miracles that um, the, uh, 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 the home of God is in your mind and the home of God is in a relationship between minds. Okay, this is, it becomes like almost like this, this platform where we can recognize him and recognize his answer and recognize his voice together because it's confirmed in both of us. When I see it, you see it. When I feel it, you feel it. When we both feel it, it's like, oh my God, how can this not be the truth? And then you're, you, that's how your trust and faith intensifies and, and, and continues to expand because it's continued to be seen in all of these platforms that are created between the joining of our minds. And you literally just join an idea. 
right? And the idea here that we're speaking of is the idea of healing, and, and that is how you, you extend to greater and better things because you are willing to heal your mind. Um, so he will answer us in truth when we come together for the purpose of healing. We just have to let it happen and step aside. That's it. You know, the voice for God is in me. The voice for God is in you. And when we come together for healing and call upon our Father's name, so is he there. And he will answer us in a way that is most helpful for all of us and, and give us the words that will be heard and give us the way that will be shown and give us the, the, the miracles, literally, that, that we can experience together to take us to new levels and new heights together. And this is actually reminding me of even like a part in, you know, in, in the Bible um, where Jesus is... Um, basically performing his miracles. And the one that comes to mind is the one with the cripple man, right? So he is brought to Jesus and he is lying on, you know, um, whatever they're carrying him on. And he, he doesn't move because he's a cripple, right? And, and he even says to Jesus, as soon as Jesus comes down to his level and says, you know, I have this because of my sins and because of my parents' parents' sins. Um, so this man believes that he is deserving of being a cripple and being a paraplegic and being sick and in pain um, because of all the sins um, of his and his parents and grandparents sins um, and all Jesus does is he looks at him and says your sins are forgiven you stand up and walk home stand up and walk home but the thing that's beautiful about this is that man had to agree that his sins are forgiven him and that he can stand and walk stand up and walk home in that instant so it was a joining between Jesus seeing the truth in him and the man saying, I want to believe that over me being a sinner and joined in that idea with Jesus to allow him to heal. So the miracles didn't happen of themselves alone. Jesus didn't go around casting these miracles like a magic trick. They literally happened in joining. They happened in agreement. They happened in agreement. Like I think that that's the most important and crucial thing. Um, so maybe I'll go back to the, the first two sentences before this main one that we've been talking about because it brings a lot of this into even deeper perspective. So again, we're in the process of healing part four. It says healing is holy. Nothing in the world is holier than helping one who asks for help. And two, come very close to God in this attempt, however limited and however lacking in sincerity. So I'm going to pause. These are two sentences before what we were talking about, right? Healing is holy. Nothing in the world is holier than helping one who asks for help. Just like with the crippled man, he came and asked for help from Jesus. And in their relationship, God is there. And it doesn't matter how limited you are in your sincerity of, you know, wanting healing and wanting help. It's a small little willingness, just a small little amount that's needed for these things to happen. But the, the crippled man didn't come to Jesus and be like, well, I don't believe you. I'm not forgiven. I'm not innocent. Because what would happen if he came to Jesus and said, I don't believe you. I'm not innocent. He wouldn't heal. That's the whole point. If you think about it, there was hundreds of thousands of people that followed Jesus. And how many miracles are there? You can count them on your hands. It is because the miracles had to happen in joining, in relationship, as two. And so this is for me how, you know, we, we really start to make this course practical is by realizing that it's not me who's a teacher. It's not me who's the healer. It's not me the one who performs the miracles. I'm the one who asks the voice for God for what miracles I can perform and I will be told very, very specifically. And most of the time that person is going to come to you. They're going to ask you. They're going to seek you out. They're going to find you. And this is why we don't need to broadcast ourselves all over social media and all over everywhere and promote ourselves and be like, look at me, come to me, come pay me, um, you know, I'm the therapist, I can help you, all these things. It's kind of like, well, you know, the plan, the script is already written. Those who are meant to come to you will come to you and they will be sent by God. And that's how you save time too, because instead of dabbling in all these small little things that you can do that, you know, may or may not be helpful, it just saves space and saves time for, you know, those true, powerful, united, healing, miraculous experiences that can happen when it's in, in God's plan and, and our brother asks, um, because nothing really happens unless our brother asks for help. And sometimes we need to play that role of the intermediary um, before they're ready for God directly. But if we're willing to play that part to help our brother to facilitate that relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God, with divine inside themselves, then that is exactly what we're going to be experiencing inside of ourselves. So I want to keep reading this paragraph. Healing is holy. 
Nothing in the world is holier than helping one who asks for help. And two, come very close to God in this attempt, however limited, however lacking in sincerity. Where two have joined for healing, God is there. And he has guaranteed that he will hear and answer them in truth. They can be sure that healing is a process he directs because it is according to his will. We have his word to guide us as we try to help our brothers. Let us not forget that we are helpless of ourselves and lean upon a strength beyond a little scope for what to teach as well as what to learn. Perfect, right? Like Jesus is reminding us that healing is a process that God directs. Healing is a process that his voice directs because it is according to his will that we heal. God wills us salvation, which means forgiveness, which means healing, which means restoration, which means the awakening to what we are in truth. And ultimately, God wants us to um, follow his will because his will is the one that brings that ultimate healing, where there is nothing in this world that cannot be healed by this love, by this will, by this way, by this voice. Absolutely nothing. And that's why there's no order of difficulty in miracles. That's why we can heal the sick and raise the dead. Um, that is why we can create technology to touch and bless the entire world and bring us to a, a greater evolution, a, a, a benefit to humanity in many, 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 many plethoras of ways. Like this day and age, miracles are being presented in, um, actually they're not, very like being presented that often um but when they do they look different than they did in jesus's time and they look different than they did in jesus's time because the people of the world today are looking at things differently you know we're, we're not just you know whatever um and so i think what i'm meaning by that is open your eyes and open your mind to simply being a vessel of miracles and gifts of god and whatever that looks like will be presented to you um in the time that you're ready for it because we all have a particular part to play here we we all have a particular gift to give here and he is saying that this he will guide us it is his word that will guide us and it is his voice that will help our brothers not us so we literally, with them, have to come to this place of not knowing and listening so we can receive what we need in order to give it. And um, again, let us not forget that we are helpless of ourselves. So of ourselves alone, we are helpless. We can't do anything. If we've made ourselves up to be the therapist, if we made ourselves up to be the teacher, if we made ourselves up to be the author, if we made ourselves up to be anything that is not our true identity, we will be very, very limited in help in, in helpfulness. And in fact, Jesus says we will be helpless. So this is why we must lean upon a strength beyond our little scope for what to teach as well as what to learn. So it's both. Right, And I really feel this is why now I'm being led into the direction of learning a lot more about like sciences and technologies and, and, and the scientists and, and computer geeks of the world that have already kind of paved their way in that direction because that's what is being given me to learn at this time. So as I've already learned about how my mind works and how my mind works in relation to others and how my mind works in relation to ideas, now I'm able to allow it to become practical in a way that the people of the world needed the most at the this time right um, so so that's just how I've learned it but but we all um, will be told what to teach and what to learn when we listen to his voice and call upon his strength so I just want to read the final paragraph and I'll read it in one shot which is connected with this first one so it says a brother seeking aid can bring us gifts beyond the heights perceived in any dream he offers us salvation for he comes to us as Christ and Savior. When he asks, what he asks is asked by God through him, and what we do for him becomes the gift we give to God. The sacred calling of God's Holy Son for help in his perceived distress can be but answered by his Father. Yet he needs a voice through which to speak his holy word, a hand to reach his Son and touch his heart. In such a process, who could not be healed? This holy interaction is the plan of God himself by which his son is saved. Amen, 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 amen. You know, in the last five years of my life have been dedicated to this very idea. God, where shall you have me go? What shall you have me do? And what shall you have me say? And to whom? 
It's all up to him. And because of that, we've been sent literally around the world to bless people's lives because they have asked us to. And it's really God asking them through them, like, or God asking us through them. And so whatever it is we choose to give them, we are giving to God, literally. So if someone's going to come and ask us for help and we shun them or say it can't happen or have the story about where they are or, you know, they're in too much darkness, they're in too much, you know, physical pain, you know, all the things of the world say this particular thing can't happen, can't heal, can't change. We're forgetting that what we give to them, we give to God. So if I'm giving that story to them, that's what I'm giving to God and that's what I'm going to receive. So we really have to be mindful here that what we want is to heal. And healing happens in the joining. It literally happens in coming together and healing together. Like there's only so much we can do with healing our minds and, and having the change here. But it's another thing to have it extend and be shared in that healed mind and that, that healed experience. So little Ella is now uh, needing me and so I think it's perfect time to just you know settle into this idea um but i love you all i'm going to go grab her and bless you all bye